<sighs> Greetings, everyone. Well, continuing on with the holiday updates. Uh, this time around, we kind of got a grab bag of stuff. It's basically a mix of comedy, drama, and action. The reason it's a mix is because I don't really have enough from any one of those individual genres to sort of warrant doing a whole video just on one on comedy, one on drama, one on action. So I figured let's just have this, the everything else update. And uh, yeah, so let's get right to it. Comedy, drama, and action on the holiday updates. Holiday. Today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Alrighty, so uh, let's see what to begin with here. We got uh, drama, we got comedy, more drama, we got action, and uh, I think that's action. And probably should have organized these before, right? Just hold on, hold on. Alright, let's. Uh, okay, here we go. So, comedy. Oh, I've actually got way less comedy than I thought. Well, let's do those first, shall we? This is one that I used to have on DVD many moons ago. Uh, I used to have the entire TV series that it was based on as well. That's something I really need to pick up again. But uh, definitely wanted to get the movies on Blu-ray. There's been two based on this particular TV series. Uh, something that's uh, permeated Canadian culture and painted a uh, interesting picture of life in a mobile home neighborhood also known as a trailer park. We have Trailer Park Boys, the movie. Yes, the first Trailer Park Boys movie wasn't really part of the continuity of the series. It was just kind of, uh, you know, introduce the boys to a uh, worldwide audience. And as a sort of uh, summation of the style and um, humor of the show, I think it works really well. Um, you see, there's a, there's a lot of jokes in this movie that are sort of taken straight out of the show, and there's a lot of uh, new stuff as well. And I'm just going to check the settings on my camera to make sure we're not in autofocus mode. I hate it when I'm in autofocus mode, and it keeps... Ah, oh, look at that. Autofocus is on. Let's just make an adjustment there. Okay, yeah, we do things candid and on the fly here at the Multimedia Chronicles. Anyway, Trailer Park Boys the movie. If you love the show, check out the movie. It's a lot of fun. Now, the series ended uh, with Season 7 and then a, uh, a special called uh, Say Goodnight to the Bad Guys. And Say Goodnight to the Bad Guys kind of ended on a cliffhanger, which seems to lead into the second movie, Countdown to Liquor Day. I actually have not watched this yet. This is the only Trailer Park Boys thing I have not seen yet. Um... So this was actually, these were both in the $5 bin at HMV's Boxing Week sale. So pretty cool. I couldn't pass that up. There was quite a few good things in their $5 bin. And uh, I've been meaning to pick these up for ages. Uh, I sold the DVD of this a long time ago, intending to get the Blu-ray. And I've been wanting to pick this up for quite a while as well, just because I've never seen it. And hey, more more good stuff for the boys. And some good news, uh, they're actually doing a season 8, which I don't know when it's going to be on or where it's going to be on, but there is a season 8 in the works. Uh, they just finished filming it a little while ago. So, next up, drama. Drama. Okay. First up, this is one that people seem to be really split on. Um, from the marketing and the the poster art, you I can see why a lot of people were disappointed or or uh, upset by this film because it was definitely made out to be something that it is not. I am of course talking about the very controversial Spring Breakers. Now, from the cover here, you'd think that this is just going to be some cheesy. Uh, you know, college frat party comedy, but it really isn't. <laughs> it's actually quite deadly serious, and I think a l the problem is a lot of people took this movie at face value, and it depicts a lot of, you know, drunkenness and debauchery and drug use and partying, and there's a lot of nudity and sex and just, and violence and, and everything, and I think a lot of people just kind of as I say, took it at face value and didn't really see what it actually is, and what it actually is uh, I kind of liken it to Natural Born Killers. How Natural Born Killers 
a lot of people took it face value when it first came out. But what Natural Born Killers was about was uh, it was essentially a satire and a, uh, a social commentary on society at the time and just sort of uh, popular culture and how in that case it was about glorifying serial killers and turning them into celebrities. In this case it's basically just about the vapidness of a lot of today's generation. Not all of today's generation but you know it, it, it's it, it's basically about millennials and how the culture of millennials has kind of lost its way and is very directionless. It's just all about uh, for a lot of people it's just all about partying and things that really have no meaning and just all about uh, pleasure and me 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 and stuff like that and that's really what spring breakers is about it's 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 showing that at its most extreme and pushing it beyond and it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea and i know it's not everybody's cup of tea even when i posted about this that i picked this up on facebook i got a wildly mixed selection of comments and i'll expect much the same on this youtube video um it's the kind of film that honestly you want to watch a couple of times the first time it just kind of comes across as a bit of an assault on the senses and it can be a little bit hard to to see the subtext in it but there's actually a lot more going on here beneath the surface than is readily apparent and it's definitely worth a second look um but as i say it's not the kind of movie you want to take at face value because there's a lot more going on under the surface than is readily apparent uh, the debauchery and the uh, the excess and the bacchanalia essentially of it is very intentional and it's very over the top I and mean, you have a lot of sex and nudity in it but it, you don't feel aroused or titillated by it it just it, it, it bothers you in some intangible way and when you begin to realize what it what it's actually about and what's actually going on um, it's a lot deeper than it may first appear so Spring Breakers, definitely a, a challenging film, and it seems that a lot of people were not up to the challenge, <laughs> judging from all the one-star ratings on Amazon. Um, there's actually some pretty good discussions about it over on IMDb, which is something you will not hear me say very often. More often than not, IMDb is just full of people saying it was the worst this or that was the well every movie ever there will be a post in there saying this was the worst movie i ever saw in my entire life and um there doesn't seem to be a lot of that on the spring breakers board there's actually a lot of pretty intelligent discussion about it so check it out another one uh this is also in the five dollar bin at hmv actually oh and i should mention i got the uh the slip cover as well oh and we haven't talked about extras have we let's talk about extras Trailer Park Boys movie, special features, we got deleted scenes, alternate takes, lost interviews, director's commentary track, feature at the Trailer Park movies behind the scenes. There you go. Countdown to Liquor Day, we have feature audio commentary, deleted scenes, alternate endings, Sunnyvale stories, the making of the Countdown to Liquor Day, Randy gets a haircut, and more. And finally, Spring Breakers, we've got quite a selection here, if I recall correctly. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, we did get the, the nice slip cover, it's quite nice. Did I mention I got the slip cover? Yeah, and uh, thank you, Walmart. For putting your sticker on the slipcover with your cement-like glue, it actually took some of the uh, uh, the uh, gloss off of the finish, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, uh, bonus features got audio commentary, behind the scenes, deleted scenes, an insightful look at the music of Spring Breakers, and special featurettes with Vice Magazine. So yeah, really good film, um, and and definitely very challenging. So next up, this is also in the five dollar bin. This is one I again used to own. Uh, actually, I used to own it on VHS. I think I owned it briefly on DVD. Now I have it on Blu-ray. Magnolia, which is just a wonderful story about uh, several people's lives and how they're all interconnected sometimes in ways they don't even realize. Uh, just a brilliant, brilliant, and once again, very challenging film. This is more straight up drama, uh, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of surrealism, uh, but definitely worth checking out if you've never seen it. It's a bit of a long haul. It's over three hours long, so set aside some time and make a nice big bowl of popcorn. But uh, great cast in this. you got uh, Jeremy Blackman, Tom Cruise, Melinda Dillon, Philip Baker Hall, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Ricky J, William H. Macy, Alfred Molina, Julianne Moore, John C. Riley, Jason Robo Robards, and Melora Walters. So fantastic cast and a really good movie that for some reason it seems like a lot of people have kind of overlooked it. It's definitely worth checking out, especially since you can get it so cheap now. So in terms of special features here, we've got uh, Magnolia Video Diary, covering, covers the blossoming of a modern-day masterwork. Frank T.J. Mackey Seminar, Seduce and Destroy Infomercial, 
Amy Mann, Save Me, music video, and theatrical trailer and TV spots. So there's not a ton, ton of special features on there, but really the main focus here is the movie. It's just a wonderful, wonderful movie and, uh, and definitely deserves more attention. We're just going to move this over a tad. There we go. I'm trying to knock everything off. Next up, this is one uh, I was really happy to see this in the $5 bin, actually. This is one I've been meaning to check out for ages. I'm a huge fan of this particular artist's uh, silent films. I haven't actually seen any of his sound films, just a few clips here and there. I really need to get on that. But uh, the life story of Charlie Chaplin, as told in Chaplin, with Robert Downey Jr. as the legendary screen icon. Um, yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about this film over the years, and I've really been wanting to check it out, especially since I really like Robert Downey Jr. just as an actor. Speaking of Natural Born Killers, he was very memorable as Wayne Gale, the uh, muckraking uh, sensationalist reporter in that. It was uh, great, great stuff. So this one uh, actually has quite a lot of extras on it. It's got uh, All at Sea, Chaplin Home Movie, Strolling into the Sunset featurette, Chaplin the Hero featurette, the Most Famous Man in the World featurette and theatrical trailer. Oh, and I see the rest of the special features are just 1080p high definition, widescreen, English audio. Yeah, great. That's wonderful. Don't list that shit in the special features, please. Anyway, Chaplin. Haven't watched it yet, but really looking forward to seeing it because I am a huge fan of the uh, master himself. Now, this one I could not believe. This was part of Walmart's... Um, uh, Black Friday sale, actually. Uh, normally, this set goes for about a hundred bucks or so. It's, uh, I mean, it's an HBO series, and HBO sets tend to be a little more expensive than average season sets. But uh, I've been wanting to check this out for ages because everybody and their dog has told me about how how fantastic it is. We have Band of Brothers, the complete series, all ten parts, and this beautiful uh, tin set. And this actually is a. Uh, a thing that just slides off and if we uh, take a look here it's really quite nice so how much was this going for you're wondering $24.99 yeah couldn't pass that up they also had the Pacific for $24.99 which is sort of the you know spiritual successor to this a lot of the same uh, folks involved but uh, I didn't have enough I had enough to get one but not the other so uh, naturally, I picked up this one because this is the one that seems to get the most attention. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to checking this one. It's quite a nice tin. You've got the contents listed on the inside of the tin. And then if you take this out, you've got uh, more artwork inside. This this tin actually fully disassembles. So you get, you get that and there and, and there. <laughs> In 3D! Woo! All right. Anyway, uh, that's Band of Brothers, and then if we open it up, it's basically a huge uh, digipack of doom. Got uh, kind of reminiscent of my alien set thing. So there we go. Massive roadmap there. <laughs> but uh, no booklet. But uh, that's okay. So quite a nice, uh, nice collection, and definitely a steal at twenty-five bucks. Um, I'll, I'll uh, be sure to keep an eye out for the Pacific as well and see if I can get a deal on that at some point. I'm just going to move these over here a little bit. There we go. So in terms of contents, uh, we've got all ten parts of the miniseries, an 80-minute documentary, We Stand Together, the, easy, the Men of Easy Company, a 30-minute making-of featurette, and something about the premiere in Normandy, and exclusive Blu-ray features on every episode. We have picture-in-picture -picture commentary in the words of Easy Company and an interactive field guide in the field with the men of Easy Company. So pretty cool uh, selection of extras there. I don't know. I'll probably, I might keep this slip thing on. I don't know. I'm not sure. Just because it's, it's kind of difficult to disassemble and store otherwise. But I don't know. We'll see. So next up, we got some action movies. First up, just real quick, uh, I reacquired Crank and Crank 2. I know I was saying I wanted to get the individual ones, but, you know, I decided just to get this, because, I mean, here it says Disc 1. Turns out Disc 2 is just the digital copy disc, so really I'm not missing anything from the two-disc set that I would miss. So I decided just to get this. So nice, uh, nice companion piece to Gamer, which I know a lot of you hate, but I love. 
Uh, then again, this was, uh, <clears throat> I believe this was part of the same Black Friday sale I got this one from. We have Liam Neeson, Unknown. Yeah, it's, it's another, you know, in the long line of, I can't remember anything about my life movies. But uh, starring the always awesome Liam Neeson, so pretty cool. And it was only five bucks and came with a slipcover, so how can you go wrong there? So in terms of extra features here, we've got uh, Liam Neeson, known action hero. Discover how the star of Unknown solidifies his action star status. And plus, unknown, what is known? Investigate the characters and plot of this international thriller. And that's it. That's it. We get two. We get two extras. Woohoo. Don't go all out there, guys. You know, don't hurt yourselves. And finally, I had the old set. Uh, it was sent to me by a viewer a while back and uh, decided to, uh, to upgrade because this one actually has more extras. Um, I was a little puzzled by this, however, because the fifth movie came out shortly after this was released. But anyway, we have the 25th anniversary collection of Die Hard, which includes movies 1 through 4 uh, on Blu-ray. Still no uh, extended cut of the fourth one, oddly. I don't know why they keep avoiding putting that one on Blu-ray, but uh, whatever. But anyway, uh, as far as I'm aware, this does include all the extras from the previous set. Plus, it has a fifth disc, which has a whole new pile of extras uh, called Decoding Die Hard. So you've got, it says, jo Decoding Die Hard. Join the stars and filmmakers of the first four films for an unprecedented behind-the-scenes journey. Seven all-new featurettes take you so deep inside the world of Die Hard, you may have to shoot your way out. All-new featurettes include... Modern Day Hero, Casting, Evolution, and the Legacy of John McClane. I love that name. Along for the Ride, Engaging Sidekicks who have teamed up with McClane. Bad to the Bone, McClane's Well-Armed and Formidable Foes. Punishing Blows, Creating the Intense Action Sequences, Fist Fights, and Stunts. Explosive Effects, Rolls of Roll of Groundbreaking Visual and Special Effects, including some of the biggest explosions on screen. Reinventing the action genre, development of the franchise from concepts to character to story, the right hero for the right time, appeal and influence of diehard films on pop culture. So there we go. Let's put that there. So yeah, so it's pretty nice. Uh, basically, it's a really tight slip cover. It's giving Avatar a run for its money. And then we've got, uh, it's actually really nice matte finish. And I was happy that it was wrapped in plastic, so Walmart didn't put a sticker on it. Although there is a sticker on the back that's not in any rush to remove. And then we got uh, inside, we've got kind of a digibook thing with a bullet on the back. It's actually a pretty nice looking set. Uh, but then we've got the cardboard sleeves for the discs. Thankfully, it's Blu-ray, so they're hard to scratch. But, uh, you know, and it's a nice looking set, certainly. But uh, I would have preferred not to have those. So they kind of did the same thing they did with Avatar, except uh, it's just standard, you know, trying to... Can I even get it out? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it just kind of slides out like that. So this is the... the and the bonus disc is a Blu-ray as well. It's not, uh, you know, they didn't sneak a DVD in there, which is nice for the extras. So there you go. So we got uh, the 25th anniversary collection of Die Hard. And uh, you can find this one pretty cheap. I actually got it for 20 bucks at Walmart, and it doesn't seem to have changed price since then. So I don't know if that means they're going to bring out a 26th anniversary collection that has the fifth movie in it. I, I don't know. I've not seen the fifth movie. I've only seen up to number four. I heard the fifth one wasn't that good, but... Uh, yeah, as part of the uh, you know Christmas festivities this year, we uh, a bunch of us watched the first Die Hard. There, <laughs> always good stuff. Anyway, uh, that is it for the Blu-rays for now, uh, but not quite the end of the holiday updates. No, so we got uh, got some new video games, new PS3 games. So the last part of the holiday updates will be. The uh, PS3 games is actually one or two more I want to pick up just before I do the update, so it might be a day or two before I get to that one. Don't panic. I haven't forgotten. Just busy and tired. Doing night shifts for the next, like, three weeks. Um, I'm doing... Uh, currently on my second night, second week of night shifts, and then I got two more after this. By night shifts, I mean I start at 4.30 in the afternoon and come back at 1 in the morning. 
basically means I have to walk home because there's no buses here at one in the morning. The buses stop at about like 1030, something crazy like that. Yeah, the joys of living in a small town already. Well, that is it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching and sayonara.